Welcome to Patty's Aquatics. So in today's video, this dirty, algae-filled, filthy aquarium, I'm going to explain to you why it's the perfect setup to grow out fry in. So I really have been trying to breed white cloud minnows as of late, and I had a little bit of success with it. I had a breeding pair in a 10 gallon tank. They wound up breeding. I saw a bunch of little babies on the walls, but then they wound up eating them all. So I really went online and tried to find out different techniques of trying to breed these fish. And I've seen a few different ones with just egg scattering fish in general. And that's gonna lead us to this tank here. I'll explain some of the other ones later in the video, but. This is that five gallon tank that I had gotten from my son. I showed it in that fish room tour video, which I'll link up here. But what I did was I put two bigger rocks at the bottom like this, and then I got a piece of egg crate and I cut it to size for the tank so it fit nice and snug coming down. And I set it on top of those rocks. But now the problem was these holes for the egg crate are still too large for the white clouds. They could swim underneath through these holes. So what I did is I had a bunch of river rock that I use in some of my other aquariums and I put it over the entire surface of this. So it covered everything so they couldn't get down through there. So that when they're in there for the, I had them in there about four days. So while they're in there, they're breeding, the eggs are gonna fall down through the rocks and then down on the bottom where they can't get to them and eat them. So like I said, I kept them in there for four days. Then I took them out, put them back in their little 10 gallon home aquarium and I let this tank sit for a while. Now what I'm about to show you is the aftermath and I'm gonna to explain to you really why. This is the best setup for any type of fry. It doesn't have to be just white club minnows, but what I have going on in here, just crazy and I can't wait to show you. All right, so this is the setup now. Like I said, it's filthy, full of algae. That hornwort is just all full of algae from this bright light, but it's perfect. Now I have probably about 10 or 12 little baby white cloud minnow fry in here, but that's not the only thing I've seen. Now it's hard to see because they're so small, but you see that swimming around, all those? There are tons, and I mean tons, of little microorganisms copeds, uh, detritus worms, other types of things swimming around on this aquarium walls everywhere. You can see there's like a little worm flying or swimming around on the walls too. They're everywhere. Now, how did they all get in here? Well, you see this sponge filter, which first, before we get into that, yes, I do not use filtration in my fish room at all, but I never said I was against filtration. Um, what I, I am is I don't like it mostly because it takes up real estate in my nice display tanks, but they have a purpose and I always thought they did. And for these breeding tanks, they are perfect to help move the water and keep it clean. And I'm perfectly fine with them for these situations. So that's why they're in there. But anyway, that sponge filter was in that two and a half gallon tank that I had sitting on my desk for a couple months. What I did is I had a couple of resurrection jars that I poured in that tank at that time and just let it sit. Well, when I wound up setting up that tank for trying to breed those white clouds in it initially, I dumped all the water out, but I never rinsed that sponge filter out. So I'm thinking the sponge filter was seeded with a lot of these little microorganisms. So then when I poured it into here, put it into here, I put all the same plants that were in that two and a half gallon. And then when these fry were born, what I did was I took a little piece of algae from out of my fish pond just because I knew there would be some little tiny microorganisms and paramecium and stuff like that within it to put in here for them to feed on. Well, I'd have to say when I move this over here, because this is a new location for this tank, it, they exploded. The population of these little organisms exploded everywhere. Like I said, they're probably hard to see some, but I see life everywhere moving around. And a lot of those are not fish, but you know what? That's perfect for these fry. That's perfect for any fry. Now look at this little wormy thing. This might be some type of larvae of some little tiny fly because I see these little tiny ones once in a while uh, flying around at the surface. But you know what? That's fish food as well. But there's like, like I said, little copeds. There's little tiny little things everywhere. I don't even know what half the stuff is to be honest with you. But I do know what they are. They are fish food. Like I said, these are going to be the perfect environment for any fry to live in. 
this filthy, dirty, algae-filled environment is perfect for it because it's full of life. It's full of tiny micro, microscopic life on top of it that are going to feed these tiny fish. That's what I love about this tank, and that's why this is the perfect setup for any type of fry to be able to grow up in and survive because there's going to be a plethora of food within it. Now, I also feed other foods too. I grab it. I also still feed North Fins Fry Starter in here a couple times a day on top of it, and they do eat that. Um, I will put that up on the surface, the powder and powder and flake it in there, and I'll see them go up and eat it. But I, I see them hunting these little fish, these other little organisms as well. You can see back there, they're not just swimming around. I'm sure they're looking for little, little critters here and there. Um, here's a little copet on the on the glass right there. I think that's a female one because I think they have that double tail on back. That means that they're pregnant. I could be wrong on that one, but I think I read that a long time ago on the Father Fish Shoal or uh, Discord, excuse me. But like I said, a clean, pristine tank is truly not the best place to grow fry because you're not going to have food for them, a food source other than what you put in that tank. Where this, this has a, a living, growing ecosystem of tiny organisms in it, which is perfect, like I said. It's perfect for these fish to feed off of. Now, I also have a couple cultures here, here and there, which I started, again, online. I did some research. Uh, it's for in, Invisoria. Um, I tried doing it. This one was full of them the other day, but I fed it again, so it's cloudier, so I'm hoping that pops back out. This one never cleared up to see if there's any in there. I'm assuming there will be eventually. But that's going to be another food source I plan on feeding these small fry. You get that infusoria, and then you just take a little pipette and you throw it in there for them as well. So that's the greatest tank that you can anyone could, could come up with is having a small tank or whatever size tank. You get it seasoned. You let it sit. Uh, maybe take a little piece of, if you have a pond, a piece of algae or a piece of plant from out there and seed it and you're going to get so much life within those little aquariums that's why if you grow fish outside they tend to grow faster it's because there's a plethora of food out there this is the same this is the same type of life that'll be outside in your ponds or your lakes or your streams and that's why the fish grow so fast but back to the white clouds let me show you where they are now and what setups i have what also i tried to breed them with so this is their little setup now. Don't mind the algae because I don't really care. It's perfect for any little fish or fry that are going to be in there. Um, they have about two or three babies in here that they haven't been eating for the last two weeks. So, But I haven't seen any new ones since. So I'm just giving it time. I had been bouncing them around quite a bit from this project to that project to see. So I'm just going to let them sit in here for quite a while and to see what happens what it is i took a big bunch of java moss since the last time you've seen it big ball of it and put it in the middle um so the hope is that they will kind of go in there lay eggs and it's also going to give more of a hiding spot for any other potential fry in the future which it should happen I mean, they got all that algae on the wall started so that's all perfect for those little babies to kind of hide into and also for other microorganisms to grow and for those fish to feed off of. now I also set up this other 10 gallon tank over here. Currently there's nothing in this one. So I had another pair of white clouds in here. Um, it was another big breeder female, but I didn't have a big breeder male, but I had a smaller one and I threw them in here. I really never seen anything happen in it. So what I did was then is I bought one of these. These are, uh, it's a planter box for like in a pond. So what I did, since it fits perfectly in a 10-gallon, I set it in there, and it sits right on the rim then. So I put some hornwort in here, and I put those breeder white clouds in here, and I let them sit in there for a few days. So that in the hopes if they have lay eggs, they fall through the bottom, fall into the tank, and they can't eat them, then you can easily take the white clouds out. Now, it's been about a week, and I only see one fry in here. And that fry actually looks a little bigger. It looks about the same size as that one. So I believe it actually was from that first pair that I had in here. 
and I don't really know why I haven't seen any fry since then from having those breeders in here for a few days because um, the female was pretty plump, but I don't know, not really sure on that one yet. But that's my white cloud setups as of now and what I've been doing. And then if you're wondering, I did change my fish room around a little bit. This is all the same except for those down there, but I've got a new tank. So there will be a setup video on that in the near future. It's a 55 gallon. Um, top secret of what's going in there. Let's just say it's going to be a natural tank. And then what I showed you just before, where I got this stuff, this is all on top of my Oscar tank, which is starting to get a little clear, still cloudy, but it's getting on the, on the better turn. But that big 55 was initially going to come up here, but it was a little too tall. It would have fit, but it would have been really hard to work on. So I improvised, put it over there, and put all the stuff that was on my desk in here. So then now I got a little work area in the middle of my fish room with my uh, Stubbs Aquatics coffee mug. So that's pretty much, I think, where I'll wrap it up. Like I said, again, these grow tanks are perfect for fry. Because like I said, plethora of food. You'll, you still can feed them and compensate with other foods to help with their nutrition, but they're going to have so much food to be able to eat that you'll never have to worry about them going hungry so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already to the channel and don't forget to hit that join button if you'd be interested in becoming a paid member and always remember to think outside the box and take a step back into nature i hope to see you next time your pet is aquatics <laughs>